And now, Mystery Theater. Marshall. Join me. Join me for an interlude in suspense, laden with a chilling fear of the unknown and the unexpected. Out there, in what we are pleased to call the state of nature, the strong kill the weak. Fang and claw provide the only law. Well, man, as you know, is a natural animal. But for countless centuries, he's been trying to change all that with indifferent success on the whole. But there is hope, because man, after all, has a thing called a conscience. And it works. Not always as promptly or completely as all of us might wish, but it works. And sometimes it may start working before we're even aware of it. Yes, you've always helped me, Walter. You've always been there when I needed you. I wouldn't be alive today if it weren't for you. Well, then why, George? Why are you so angry? I'll tell you why. It's because you're so smug, so righteous, so much better than me. Am I? When did I ever throw any of it in your face? You don't have to. You know, that's all. You just know. I can see that air of superiority oozing right through you. Oh, I'm sorry, George. So am I. But you have just done me your last good turn. But, George... George, what are you doing with that gun? What do you think? I'm going to kill you. Our mystery drama, The Deadly Process, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Norman Rose and Ralph Bell. Sometimes a reunion can result in a most traumatic experience. You know, these get-togethers of old army buddies or old college pals. The greatest pain does not really result from the awareness of the thinning hair and the thickening paunch. It comes from the stinging stab of recognition that precious time is now gone forever and golden opportunity has been irretrievably wasted. And this pain will leave an aching void for a fulfillment that can never come. However, neither Walter Stallings nor George Loomis has arrived at this point of the evening yet. Hey, George, remember the time you had a thing for that Latin professor's wife? Oh, oh, huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was at least twice her age, and she was so frustrated, so unhappy. Well, someone had to bring a bit of sunshine into her life. Poor little girl. Hey, you remember? You were all set to elope with her. I got Red Garrity and Stan Jakowski from the football team to sit on you till I could pound some sense into your head. Oh, I hated you that day, Walter. She only meant it as a gag. I didn't see it then. Actually, Walt, I see a lot of things now. Oh? Huh? Like what? Well, it seems to me that whenever I was in a real jam, you were always there to bail me out. Just coincidence. I don't know if I would have made it without you. Hey, uh, George, shouldn't you call your wife? Why? Oh, won't she be worried? About what? I told Louise, an old college buddy I hadn't seen in ten years, had dropped in, and we were going to dinner. You mean she buys a story like that? Well, sure. Louise is unlike any girl you or I ever knew. It's as if... Well, she's not of this world. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, which world is she a part of? Well, no world that you or I ever knew or thought about it's a kind of a world of the spirit. The spirit? <laughs> Sounds spooky. No, no, no. There's a quality to Louise that seems to see. It seems to sense things that are unsaid, unknown. Oh, is that so? Oh, yeah. It, uh, I think, uh, well, I think you'd be a shock to a system. Uh, new subject. George, why do you think I called you today? You happened to be in town. No, no. I didn't happen to be in town. I came to see you. I heard that you were with Tricon Chemical. Yeah. 
I'm just about hanging in there. Yes, but you are head of special research projects. Today. Tomorrow I may be out on my ear. Because you can't come up with an ore reduction process. How did you know? Everybody knows. Here, Tricon's sitting on the world's biggest known ore deposit, and you can't figure a profitable way to bring it up. And that, Walter, may cost me my job. Now, all is not lost, old buddy. Back in college, you remember Professor Pelham? 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 Yeah. He was the great authority on the reduction of non-ferrous metallic ores. And I was his star. Oh, pupil. Pelham, of course. I remember that paper you wrote. The theory was absolutely sound, but the technique was ahead of its time. But the technology exists today. It... It can be done. Hey, Walter. I have this feeling you... You're going to save me again. <laughs> I have the paper right here. Uh, are you interested? Am I interested? Is a drowning man interested in a life preserver? And look, Walter, there's a fortune in it for you. No, I don't care about the money so much. I'll tell you what I need. Well, anything, Walter, anything. If this can work out, you're going to be a rich man. I need the credit. Hey, George, let's call it the uh, Stallings-Loomis process. But I didn't do anything to... Ah, oh, but you will. You'll have to make certain refinements to adapt it to your particular situation. Yeah. I have the feeling. I just have the feeling I'm saved. First thing in the morning, I'll get an agreement drawn up. Oh, come on, George. Two old buddies like you and me, a handshake's enough. Share and share alike. Is it a deal, George? It's a deal. George Loomis. Who are you? Call me, uh, Mr. Even. Even? Yeah. It's because of what I do. Well, what do you do? I even things up. I don't think I understand. Well, you, uh, you borrowed some money from some pals of mine. I beg your pardon? And things are kind of shaky. See what I mean? I'm afraid I... Come on, come on. It's late at night. You want to get home? I want to go home. So these pals of mine naturally eat a lot of dough when they feel consigned. I'll repay the money. These pals of mine, uh, they keep an ear to the ground. They hear things. They hear you may be losing your job. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, that's not for me to say. My pals just want you to know that the dough has got to come through on time... One way or another. Well, you... Uh, you tell your friends that, uh, There's nothing to worry about. Not anymore. George, darling. Louise. I didn't hear you come home. I didn't want to disturb you, my dear. Why are you sitting up so late? I'm working. Well, you can come to bed now, dear. Well, I haven't finished. George, dear, I know that you've just seen the answer. The answer? The answer to the problem that's been plaguing you for so long. How do you know? I know, dearest. I know. I can see it in your face. You have found the answer, haven't you? I've been considering a new approach. And? And it looks promising. It's a highly technical process. It has to do with the separation of certain metallic ores. Well, anyhow, I, I think I have it licked. I think I have the answer. The answer. Oh, George, that's what fascinates me. Now, how did you arrive at the answer? Was it a, a rearrangement of old elements? Or was it the addition of something new? Or was it a sudden flash of insight? Uh, yes, uh, a sudden flash of insight. Oh, dear. Darling, I'm so happy. I told you. You trust your subconscious. All the meaningful answers are hidden there. Now, tell me about this college friend of yours, Walter Stallings. Walter, well... well I would have been glad to join you for dinner. Why, no, dear. After all, old friends have a certain precious quality. We, uh, we weren't exactly old friends. Oh, I thought you said that he was... Well, we were acquaintances, really. Nothing more. 
I only saw him because, uh, because I didn't want him to think I was snubbing him. Well, that was very kind of you, darling. Well, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I can't imagine you hurting anyone. It, uh, killed an evening. I suppose such things can't be helped. We can expect a production schedule to be set up for the period from the 15th through... Miss Dawson, uh, you'll have to check that uh, date and uh, with Kelsey and his people. They have those dates. We must also make sure... Oh, George. Hey, Walt. Nice day. Uh, uh, l- let me shut this thing off. Um, how, d- how did I get in here? Well, let's say I sweet-talked that receptionist into looking the other way. I uh, promise you won't fire her. Oh, I promise. You are a hard man to see, Georgie. Well, we're swamped here. But I sent my name in. Well, as you can see, I'm dictating. My regular girl is out sick. Yeah. Well, George, how are we doing uh, process-wise? You know, the stallings Loomis process? It's, um, it's in the works. The works? Well, as you know, the theory is 100% sound. Now, what manufacturing is doing, they're setting up the cost estimates. Well, how long do they sit on it? Oh, a couple of weeks, a month, who knows. Yeah. Well, I, I just dropped in, you know. Sure, I know. And uh, as soon as you get the word... You'll be the first to know. Oh, that's great. Hey, look, how about some lunch, huh? Oh, we're in such a hassle here, Walter. There's hardly time to grab a sandwich at the desk. Yeah, as you said, George, it's worth a fortune. You know what I'm going to do with my half? What? Nothing. Just sit on the beach and count the waves. I'll have a couple of girls to help me keep score. But, and champagne. Well, you'll deserve it. I'll be in touch. Mm-hmm. Oh, it occurs to me, uh, you don't know where I'm staying. I'm at the City Line Motor Inn. Oh. Well, let me write that down. Yeah, okay. And, uh, look, I really should meet Louise. I'll be on my best behavior. Well, let me check with her and find out what night she's free. Oh. Loomis! George Loomis, let me be the first to shake your hand. Uh, Mr. Barker... George, uh, it works. It works! And when you see the bonus you're in for... Well, we can talk about that later. The technique works, and we'll call it the Loomis reduction process. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Who is this, George? My name is Walter Stallings, and... Well, if you're saying what I think you're saying, that's my process you're talking about. George, what is this man saying? Uh, Mr. Barker, uh... (laughs) Uh, he, he just broke into my office. He's been threatening... George! George, what are you well, saying? who is he? Do you know him? Does he know me? We were roommates at college. What's going on here? I can explain everything, Mr. Barker. George, what are you trying to pull? I knew this man, Mr. Barker, a long time ago at school. He was George. always... George! He was always a little bit off. Now, this and... process, this ore reduction process, it is mine. I created it. It belongs to me. Now, Walter, you simply can't go around having these tantrums. Let me call security. We'll have this man removed. But it's mine. It belongs to me. I discovered it more than ten years ago. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Now, Walter, you go home, rest. You'll feel better tomorrow. George, what are you trying to do to me? Look here. Whoever you are, whatever your name is, you'd better leave now, peacefully and quietly, or I can promise you, you'll see the inside of a prison cell. Who do you think you're talking to, you fat old walrus? Now, Walter. And you, too. You steal my process, and you think you can throw me in jail. Oh, all right, Walter, that's enough. You thief! Now, take it easy, let's Walter. Let's call the police. Sure, let's call the police, and let's give them a good reason for coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, and now, for you, fatty. <coughs> Back to you, George. Now you get up. All right. You haven't had enough. You're crazy. You're crazy. You... George, why? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Why? We ask why also. And yet, it's the oldest story in the world, isn't it? While half a loaf may be better than none, the entire loaf is best of all. The loaf will have to be sliced. And we shall see who will hold the knife when I return shortly with Act Two. In a general way, one should have faith in humanity and trust in one's friends. It's when we leave generalities and come down to specifics that the rub comes in. Walter Stallings trusted George Loomis, and when the dust had settled, George had stolen Walter's valuable industrial process, and Walter was jailed for disorderly conduct when he protested such shabby treatment. 
Is there no justice? It all depends on what justice really is. More coffee, darling? Uh, oh, half a cup, maybe. I should be leaving for the office. George, what's this in the newspaper? What? Where, dear? Darling, it mentions your name. Chemical company executives in Brawl? Oh, what? that, uh... Well, I should have looked at the paper and slipped that thing out. But why? What is it? Well, I know how upsetting things like this can be George, to you. George, what does this mean? I... It means, darling, that people in Mr. Barker's position, my position, can often be at the mercy of every nut and every crank that comes down the pipe. Yes, I don't understand. It says that you stole that process from Walter Stallings. No, dear, it, it doesn't say that. It says Walter Stallings claims I stole it. But it says right here... There, there are four paragraphs in the story. Three of them are concerned with what Walter Stallings claims. And notice the sympathetic tone. The fourth paragraph is a brief couple of sentences in which our company denies all of his allegations. That's because he's just one man and we are a mammoth corporation and the public will sympathize with the underdog. But what are the facts, dear? I mean, you did meet with Walter, that's at ten days or two weeks ago. Of course. Well, what happened? We chatted. Was the process mentioned? Well... And, and did it have anything to do with the meeting you had with Walter? Yes, uh, we were with just sitting did... around trying to make talk. But uh... did you talk about the process? Well, let me tell you how. He said to me, I hear your company's having trouble trying to reduce some wars. And I said, yes. And he said, uh, I'll bet you don't remember. And I said, uh, remember what? And he said, uh, oh, you did a pretty good paper on that back in college. And suddenly, well, suddenly... Yes, dear? Well, suddenly it all came back to me. Just like that. What did? A theoretical problem I'd once solved in an exam... Isn't it remarkable, darling, how quickly we forget so many of the basics? And that's the process that he's talking about. Yes, dear, that's the process. But why should he claim that Oh, well, he... darling, he's a peculiar person. He always was. We were at school together. I got somewhere he didn't. Well, I, I think it's awful. Well, uh... look, I, I'll tell you what I'll do. After he cools down, after a couple of days in jail, I'll put up his bond. Oh, George, that would be so kind of you. And... I tell you, I, I think ethically he's entitled to something. Oh, I'm so happy you feel that way. Well, I admit, I was stumped up against it. He, he did contribute something. He reminded me that I had the answer. In that sense, he helped me find it. And in that sense, morally, he's entitled to a finder's fee. When I get the bonus, I'll give him a few thousand dollars. Oh, George, I love you so much. Is that you? No, it isn't George. It's Walter Stallings. And you must be Louise. Yes, who are... May I come in? What? Ah. It, uh, it does look like a china shop. I promise I won't be a bull. What are you saying, Mr. Stallings? Oh, Walter. After all, when a woman's husband steals a man's most precious possession, the woman can at least call him by his first name. But what are you... What am I doing here? Well, I can't get to see George at the office. They have security guards all over the place. But please, Mr. Storm. Uh, Walter, I... I'll tell you what I'm doing here. I've come to beat the living daylights out of George. What good would that do? I didn't say it would do any good. But, my dear Louise, what is left... Listen, I... I have a feeling for people. I know, I just know that you're not a bad person. Oh, is that so? Actually, you're a very good man. Now, Walter, why do you insist that my husband stole your formula? Because it's the truth. I cannot believe that George who's so gentle, so kind and sensitive, could think of behaving in such a despicable manner. I guess you believe that. Oh, yes, it's a lovely little place you have here. Everything seems so, so delicate. It's peaceful. It's a world of its own. 
Well, I hope the real world never breaks in here. But it has broken in. Well, I'm sorry. Um, may I get you a cup of tea? Tea? Here's a woman's husband steals my work and she offers me a cup of tea. I like you, Walter. Oh, you like me. There's something about you that's very straightforward. You're an honest man. Uh, wait. Wait just a minute. Are you saying that I am right and George is wrong? You can be honest and still be mistaken. Yeah, sure. Walter, listen to me. Try to shed your anger. I am entitled to my anger. I know what happened. Are you convinced that the formula belongs to you? Now, look here. Please, answer. Yes. Then you don't need anger. You don't need bitterness. What do I need? You need peace of mind. Calm. Serenity. I always had those things. It's because my formula's been stolen that I'm no longer serene, calm, peaceful. If you truly owned those qualities, you could never really lose them. You know, you're a witch. Please. I... I came in here with blood in my eye, ready to kill. And now... And now? Well, now I... I feel so different. What did you do to me? Nothing. You probably found yourself. Yes, yes, I did. I just remembered something. What? Oh, the, the basic relationship that existed between George and me. And what was that? Oh, well... You wouldn't want to hear it. No, if it's the truth. Well, well, he was kind of dumb. I was always getting him out of jams. That's how you saw it. This is typical of the stupid things he's always done. You're not supposed to be angry, remember? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not angry. I, I bear him no malice. <laughs> it's his way, and he can't help it. Why did I blow my stack? Why did... Oh, wait a minute. Good Lord, I... I have my proof. You mean what appears to be proof? Pelham. Professor Pelham. Who? My old metallurgy prof. He's an internationally respected authority. He'd remember. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Louise. For what? Well, well, you love George. And you helped me just now to come up with... with the evidence that can destroy him. No, Walter. The truth will never destroy anybody. had a visitor this afternoon. As a matter of fact, he just left. Oh? Walter Stallings. Walter... He's really a very sweet person. Louise, the man is violent. No. He's just troubled. Confused. Look, if he even made so much as a hint of a threat... We became friends. I don't believe it. Why not? He's just a nice man. Oh, darling, you don't know anything about... About what? About the real world. Dear, why do you keep insisting I know nothing about the real world? I'm very much aware of it. He's hysterical, unstable. He he could have beaten you. There's only one way to treat wild animals. Oh, and what's that? Lock them up. In the first place, he's not an animal. Secondly, locking people up never solves anything. And thirdly, we found a way to handle the problem. You what? He must be made to face reality. And reality is that he must give up these hallucinations that the process belongs to him. Well, I agree with that completely. Now, he happened to mention an old college professor. Oh. Oh, what was the name again? Um, Pelham? Pelham? Yes, he said that Pelham could vindicate him. Uh, he said that? Well, of course. We know it's impossible. Pelham will disillusion him. Well... Professor Pelham will, won't he? Well, of course. And thus, Walter will have to face the truth. I gather he respects Pelham. And Pelham has no ulterior motives. So he'll have to accept Pelham's word. <laughs> so you see, my darling, these things always work themselves out. You don't need violence, force, and... Where are you going? Oh, I uh, forgot to tell you. I'm due back at the shop. You have to work again tonight. I'm afraid so. Oh, well, try not to stay too late. Well, I mustn't make a promise I can't keep. I'm afraid I'll be out very late. What? What? It's... 
Mr. Starling. Good morning, Morty. You're more beautiful than ever. Oh, how I long for you all these years. You're still full of your old nonsense. Can I have a cup of coffee with the professor? Um, oh, what? Um, yeah, uh, the professor. He ain't in. Oh? He's uh, gone to one of them uh, a conferences. Where? One of them foreign countries. Really? Yes, he'll be gone a while because he'll go on a sabbatical. Morty, Morty, why are you lying? Oh, honest, Mr. Starling. You I... don't know how to lie, Morty. You make a horrible mess of it. Now, you uh, tell the professor that but, I'm here. But he... Uh... Yes? Oh, <laughs> He's in his study. <laughs> Thank you, Morty. Come in. Hello, Professor. Why, it's, uh... Walter it's, uh, Stallings. Uh, Walter. Sit. Find a chair. Now, what's this bit you're not in? I, uh... I, I'm trying to write my book. <laughs> Same book? Same book. It's good to see you, Walter. Professor... You are going to save my life. Uh, do you remember a paper I wrote for you, oh, 10, 11 years ago? Mm, it's going back a long time ago. Oh, yeah, but you said that you'd never forget that paper. Uh, I did? Yes, it, it was all about new methods of reduction of non-ferrous metals. Oh, Walter, the years come and go. But you were so taken with it. You, you kept the original and I had to make a copy for my own files. Uh, Walter, if I kept copies of all the papers my students wrote, my home would be a warehouse. But professor, you, you wrote such glowing praise on practically every page. I, I'm sorry, I just can't recall it. Look, I, I brought the idea in that paper to George Loomis. You recall him, the... The class dummy? I, I don't see... Well, him. believe it or not, he is head of research at Tricon Chemical, and, well, he stole the process from me. Oh, I can hardly believe this. I guess he came down here to buy you off, huh? What? How dare you? How much did he offer you? Oh, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, well, I hope that your conscience... Walter, I, I really don't remember... Yes, George was here. He he offered me a, a consultantship at Tricon, and uh, I, I'm getting very old, and, and I never made any real money. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and Walter, I, I really don't remember. I, I really don't remember. Good night, Professor. Mr. Starling. Yes, Morty. Forgive him. He's getting senile. That man in there is not the same, Professor Pelham, you used to worship. I used to worship. I know, Morty. I know. But what can be done? Oh, nobody can help me now. Don't say nobody. I can save you. And I can save him. How, Morty? I've got the paper. What? The, the paper? My paper? That paper. He kept it for himself because he liked it so much... And then the other day he says to me, Morty, burn this. Well, I couldn't understand. It just ain't like him. Oh, Morty, Morty, how can I ever thank you? But why should you thank me? I'm only doing the right thing. <laughs> now I've got him. Now, Mr. George Loomis, look out. <laughs> He stands there, Walter Stallings, holding a sheaf of technical-looking typewritten pages. A treatise written with youthful enthusiasm as part of a college exercise. And now, it determines the profits of a billion-dollar international corporation and the lives of at least three human beings. We'll see where the process leads us when I return shortly with Act Three. Somewhere, sometime, someone has surely given us the following advice. Always get it in writing. So much of the anguish of this world results because we fail to heed that advice. Walter Stallings had a problem because he didn't get an agreement from George Loomis in writing. However, luckily, miraculously, somehow, Walter has managed to come up with the most effective writing of all. Come in, George. Sit down. Uh, yes, sir. George, uh, we have a problem. Stallings is taking us to court. He hasn't a leg to stand on. Are you sure? He's a crank. It's one of those nuisance things. Are you sure? He has no proof. Nothing. Written? Oral? Absolutely none. 
Then we have to fight him. But something bothers me. What's that? I've had some research done on him. Uh, he seems to be a very competent man. He has a good reputation. What makes you think he can't win in court? Mr. Barker, he doesn't have a chance in the world. I hope so, George. For your sake. Who, Miss Dawson? Uh, no, no, no. I, I won't see anyone. Uh... Oh, just tell him I'm out of town. Hello. Now, look here, Mr... Mr. Even. You still owe my pal some money. Look, I received a promotion. I'm getting a bonus. Yeah, that was as of yesterday. But I am getting a bonus. Yeah, but today is a lawsuit. Oh. Yeah, oh. Well, what does it mean? Big corporations are constantly being Regardless, sued. Regardless, this guy wins. He can't win. If he wins, where would it leave you? Out of a job and broke. You see the position I'm in. As a starter, I'd have to bust your legs. Well, he can't. He what? Can he win? He has a chance. Okay. So now I know where we stand. I know what I gotta do. I may be wrong. Uh-uh. He has to have no chance at all. Here's somebody coming. I want to make sure it's the right guy. I keep in a shadow, you guys. I'll ask him for a light. If it's him, I'll cough. And then you guys step up and take care of him. Uh, excuse me, pal. Uh, you got a light? Uh, yeah, I think so. <coughs> Thanks. Hey, what? Just hand me his briefcase. I'll see if he's got something interesting in it. Don't take any dough, nothing from his wallet. We gotta make this look like an automobile accident. Just let him lay there. Poor guy. He was crossing the street and some hit and run driver knocked him off. <laughs> As if you're not really here. As if I'm... Imagining it? No. This isn't a dream or a delusion. I'm awake. I know I'm awake. Look. Hold out your hand. I I'd like to touch you. Walter, let me touch your hand. Walter? Walter? Now, darling, it must have been an illusion of some sort. But I'm so positive. I... Wh when, when did you say it happened? With exactly nine o'clock. I was just about to listen to the news. Darling, here is why he couldn't have been oh, George, here. George, why do you insist? Because at seven o'clock he was found by a police car. What? A hit-and-run driver. Oh, no. He was taken to the hospital. He was... Uh... Dead? Almost. He's in a coma. He's not expected to live. But he was here. No, darling. I saw him. We spoke. Darling, it's I, your imagination. I'll go to him. I'll, I'll go to the hospital. You can't. How would it look? It would look like what it is, a visit from a friend. Walter? Walter? He can't hear you, Mrs. Lewis. He can, doctor. Ah. <sighs> He can. Uh, and I can hear him. Uh, Louise. Yes, Walter. I... I had to leave you before... Because I... I wasn't dead yet. What are you saying, Walter? Mrs. Loomis, he isn't saying anything. Louise. I have to see George. When I'm dead, he mustn't worry... I'll still help him. Of course. 
You'll help George. I've always helped him. I'll still help him after I'm dead. Walter. Oh, Walter. Mrs. Loomis, you, you must leave now. After I'm dead, I'll come back for George. Mrs. Loomis. Yes, yes. Goodbye, Walter. Goodbye for now. Doctor. I'm I'm sorry, but there isn't a chance in the world. He can hang on for minutes, days, but we can't save him. But I was just talking to him. You heard. I heard nothing. He he wasn't saying anything. But I heard him. I heard him. Mrs. Loomis, it's it's just your imagination. <laughs> A taxi. You don't need a taxi, George. I got a car right here. Step inside. Where did you come from? We won't take up too much of your time. Let's drive through the park, Chester. It's such a nice day. What do you want? I paid off your friends. I got lots of friends. Like, uh, I got a friend who tells me if he could get his hands on Tricon's proposed development program, it would be worth a fortune certain people. I dare say it would, but uh, I have no use for espionage of any kind. When can you let me have the plans? I don't think you hear me. You're the one who don't understand, isn't listening. You give me some papers. They describe that ore process. Nobody else knows but the two of us. You can't keep asking me to do anything like that. You can't. Now, sooner or later, I have to be caught. You know what that is, Georgie? That's life. Louise! She isn't home. What? Walter. Well, I I thought... I thought you were in the hospital. No. I'm dead. What are you saying? You're here. Yes. I'm here, but I'm dead. You... Uh, look, either you're crazy or I'm crazy. George, I'm here because you sent for me. I sent for you? You always sent for me, George, one way or another. You always used to bring me all your troubles. Yeah. And you're always so helpful. Maybe that's why I hated you. You always knew best. You were always right. I couldn't help that. Once, just once, I wanted to get the better of you. That's why I had to take your process. I had to. Yes. Oh, you need me, George. You're in trouble again. That's a lie. Look ahead, George. Six months, a year from now, you'll be completely disgraced. That that isn't true. It's starting right now. George, that's why I'm here. That's why you wanted to see me. I have to bail you out again. What can you do? Come with me, George. Come where? Where I'm going. Where's that? I... I don't know yet. Let's go for a little walk. A nice, pleasant little walk. Down along the river. May I come in, Louise? Please do. Where's George? Well, I know he was home this afternoon. He might have gone out for a walk. Is something wrong? I am deeply disturbed. Is it possible that George and this, uh, this Walter Stallings are in cahoots? Is it a plot to hold up the company, a big shakedown? Oh, how could you possibly suspect, George? I was driving down Garfield Boulevard and I saw them. It was just a half hour ago. Saw whom? George and this, uh, Walter Stallings. But you couldn't have. They were walking down the street together. You saw it? Like two long-lost friends. Are you sure? Look, young lady, I, I never make a mistake. I know what I saw. But Walter Stallings is in the hospital in a coma. I was there this morning. I understand your loyalty to your husband. But I'll bet my life on what I saw. 
By the time I could turn my car around, they disappeared somewhere down River Street. Oh, excuse me. Do you Mr. mind Barker? if I answer that, Mrs. Loomis? If that's George, I want to confront him without oh, your... Certainly, Mr. Barker. Hello. Is Mrs. Loomis there? Who's calling? This is Dr. Coleman. You can tell me first. Walter Stallings is dead. What? We did all we could. He died an hour ago. But, but, but I, 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 I just saw him on Garfield Boulevard. Oh, uh, oh no, sir, you, you were mistaken. Uh, will you tell Mrs. Loomis? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I'll tell Mrs. Loomis. Walter Stallings. Is dead, isn't he? I... I guess I was mistaken. I understand, Mr. Barker. Funny. But I did see him. I promise you uh, won't say anything to George when you see him. I promise. I won't say anything to George. If I see him. If I see him. At that point, she knew. She knew what you and I have already suspected. That she wouldn't see George again. She wasn't really surprised when George's body was found in the river a few days later. She knew it was necessary for Walter to help George once again. And for better or worse, that was the way it had to be. I'll be back for better in a few moments. George Loomis, Walter Stallings. A bond, a mysterious, unbreakable bond forged between two men. Neither asked for it, neither even wanted it. But in life and in death, they would be inseparably linked. And uh, talking about the bonds that link, we hope you'll be bonded to your set for the next mystery tale. Our cast included Norman Rose, Ralph Bell, Marion Seldes, Bob Maxwell, and Jackson Beck. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.